Hello all, welcome to my Mothra Outline video. This follows the Rodan Outline and takes place immediately after Rodan and just before Godzilla 3. We start in a flashback to ancient times. This follows a sped up vision of Mothra dying after Ghidorah had damaged her. She lays her eggs in the water and her egg is saved by Godzilla, brought to modern day China. Here, Mothra hatched, but was corrupted. As to cleanse itself, it laid two eggs and died in the process. This is where Mothra ceased to be great in size. One egg was white, one egg was black. The guardians of Mothra buried the black egg to keep it away from the sun. It was brought to a deep chamber beneath the temples. The black egg is said to contain a darker version of Mothra, named Batra. The rumors of ancient scripture say once every 50,000 years is a Mothra said to split into two, though this time had consumed the purity and since then has kept Batra in darkness to slumber, allowing for Mothra to have time, though with each life spent, Mothra seems to be decreasing in strength. And now we fast forward back in time to the modern times. We enter a briefing in the Chinese monarch base with monarch executives, joined by different departments of monarch. Here we see monarch department heads argue over searching for Jonah Allen in China and Russia, and the lack of cooperation from the said countries. Here, Ling argues that at the very least China has allowed their presence, and that if they push for more, they will regret even that leniency. It is suspected that Jonah Allen is hiding in the Asian region, quite possibly in an unknown base built in a secluded region in Mongolia or Tibet. It is here that we meet the son of Gunpei from Kong School Island, as the head of the Japanese team. He continues to argue that Ling is not trying hard enough. And they break away from the meeting as the rest of the executives determine a current plan of action in the case they do find Jonah Allen and any of his potential bases. Here Chen mentions that in the meantime their team has been experiencing small tremors and recommends to move any non-essential personnel out. They acquire manpower from the locals and a Japanese escort with a tag-along Chinese armed guard. It is here another tremor is felt by the staff. They begin to search the area to pinpoint the source of the tremors. Ling in one of the pyramids is in meditation when she hears the rumble of the pyramid as a new chamber opens up into a long dark cavern. Here she begins to hear whispers of the hunt. She radios the teams outside about her findings. They reconvene at the entrance and some scouts are sent in as Chinese guards trespass the Japanese escorts. They ask them to wait outside, to which monarch executives agree and Gunpei Jr. moves outside with a security force to prevent any potential international incident. We pan back to a hatched Mothra digging into the earth. Slowly we see her egg in the distance and the tracks left in the dirt. We pan back to Ling who begins to tell the team that she entered with that Mothra is trying to stop them. It is here another, another earthquake ensues. Water seems to burst as the entrance is sealed by rock. The team inside, led by Ling and the Chinese captain, urged the team to move further into the cavern system below. The water was making the ground unstable and they needed to head further in. In the case that the team above did dig in, they would only be endangered by staying at the collapsed entry point. They went a bit further away from where the water flowed to a big luminous cavern. The air was still and they began to order a setup of the equipment. They find several long deceased bodies of giant insects in the area, some webbed, some cocooned, as they begin to set up lights and camp in the area, Ling begins to have a terrible feeling as she hears whispers all around. Chen and Gunpei Jr. begin to lead the excavation team to dig up the collapsed rubble. They hear the rumbling of Mothra as in her larvae form she digs in. The team immediately follows Mothra in, in an attempt to stabilize the hole Mothra leaves behind. The inside team is scattered, looking for answers as Ling begins to urge caution to the Chinese captain. He orders her to wait at the camp until the men recon the area. They begin to hear yelling in the distance. Gunfire soon follows, as we see Ling overwhelmed with thousands of whispers speaking of hunger. The armed guards begin to investigate the incident. Five weapons are found on the ground with web all over them. It is here Mothra makes her way to the men as the rest of the Japanese task force follows in with medical supplies. They tend to the wounded at the camp as Mothra is heard fighting off creatures in the distance. Ling moves to greet Chen as she tells her that Batra has hatched. The creatures are heard hissing all around them as they begin to see that thousands of spiders the size of vehicles are attempting to engulf them. They try to evacuate the team as the spiders cut off any hopes for any retreat with webbing. The security forces fight back and attempt to cut th through the webs. Ling and Chen are with Gunpei Jr. when Chen is webbed and pulled away. Ling gives chase as Gunpei follows. Gunpei is able to kill the spider dragging Chen. Ling cuts at the web to help Chen as Gunpei barrages several oncoming spiders. 
Mothra illuminates as the spiders retreat and the cavern rumbles. Batra enters with red light glowing into the streams of the cavern. Mothra charges at Batra as the two titans begin their battle. Chen Ling and Gunpei move back to their camp. Rocks fall all around the entry point made by Mothra as the team sits back as they watch the titans fight. Ling thanks Gunpei and the Chinese captain begins to prepare the group to move as the titans fought. All gears to be tossed, aside from any weapons and climbing gear. Batra is wounded but counter wounds Mothra. Here Mothra retreats to another part of the cave where Batra fails to penetrate. Batra is nearly double the size of Mothra in larva form. The wounded Batra burrows away. We eventually see Batra break from the surface and begin to head to the nearest nuclear plant. Mothra, wounded, begins to cocoon. It is here Ling hears the whispers again as they say they are going to feed on Mothra. The Chinese commander calls for all to retreat back. Here Ling argues to not abandon Mothra. He counter-argues that they are moving the wounded and the civilians back out and that he'll call for backup. Chen joins in, saying that Mothra needs time. With Rodan out of the picture, there's not much to fight against Batra. Godzilla is still slumbering, and they are all that's holding back a horde from Mothra. The Chinese commander apologizes, but still refuses to risk the workers' lives. It's here Gunpei volunteers his men to defend Mothra, to which the Chinese commander advises against, but has no power to say no in the defense of the Titan. Gunpei turns to the twins and tells them that his men are ready to defend Mothra. They move to Mothra and secure a defensive perimeter. Gunpei tells the twins to retreat with the Chinese forces, to which they both decline. The first wave of spiders are able to take a few of the Japanese escorts, but eventually retreat back. The Japanese men reset up the defenses as the cavern goes silent. Chen and Ling check on Mothra who has cocoon. As she glows in the cocoon, they see inscriptions on the wall. They investigate the hieroglyphs and writings on the wall. Gunpei joins them to tell them that they have secured the perimeter and set up automated turrets to help them. We begin to hear the Japanese men banter amongst themselves, to which Gunpei argues for them to keep quiet, that the spiders know that they're there and don't want to tease them to attack, not knowing how much ammo they will have left until Chinese reinforcements. One of the Japanese men argues that they are too cowardly to come back. Gunpei cuts him off and says if Ling and Chen had the courage to go out in the middle of them, that they should all grant the chance the benefit of the doubt. Ling and Chen continue their research of the inscriptions, and after a few hours they hear gunfire in the distance as eventually they see the Chinese military make their way towards them. The Chinese commander returns as another wave of spiders moves to meet them. During the chaos, Gunpei talks to the Chinese commander who tells them that they are sealing the entrance until they return to prevent the spiders from escaping. Here we pan back to Dr. Brooks, who receives a message that the team in the Chinese monarch base is under attack by spiders and have been sealed in Chen and Ling inside with the security team to protect Mothra. To which he begins to ask the status of Mechagodzilla, who is functional, but barely. Chen and Ling find an ancient obelisk at the end of the crevice where Mothra is cocoon as the fighting dies down. They begin to see the history that Mothra is embedded into humanity, and that before then, the old titans were not as kind to the life of the time, nor were the people. They turn to each other and realize that humankind is much older than they first realize. The Chinese commander and Gunpei approach them as they tell them that the mythologies are true about humans at their peak in civilization collapsing. The Chinese commander is skeptical, but Gunpei inquires for more information. They suggest that they are in the fifth era of men. He then asks if anything is written about before that. Chen then tells them that the ancients ruled in those days and were not as divine and compassionate as the new titans that eventually overthrew them. She ends up telling them only one survived, only to be frozen in a stasis beaten by Gaia among several other titans who stopped the chaos. Gunpei asks, hoping they aren't at risk of waking this ancient one. Chen says, no, he's deeper towards the core of the earth. Mothra begins to wake as the men clear away. Then she digs way deeper in before digging out to the surface. The group radio back to the main group at the base and tell them to keep the entrance sealed as they are going to follow Mothra. On the surface, Batra begins to hatch at the nuclear plant and starts to fly off. And she begins to attack the nearby cities and Monarch engages with air forces. The inside group follows the path cleared by Mothra as they realize the walls are now illuminated. They see a temple built into the ground ahead in another cavern. They find the egg from which Batra hatched. Gunpei says that explains why the spiders never got to Batra. Mothra clears her wings as she flies up and digs out. The giant cavern is illuminated as they see something in the distance. The men de detonate the tunnel from which they just came from. They find the Batra tunnel and an inscription that says they angled the egg in place with hard stone to keep Batra from reaching the surface, but instead to dig deeper. Gunpei asks why and then Chen and Ling look scared at each other. They respond with Kamanga, Mother of the Dark. 
They hear gunfire again as they see Giant Leg reaching through the Batra tunnel. They try to blow it up, but Kumanga is now digging into the Batra birthing cavern. They begin to fall back towards the other entrance as another swarm of spiders chases in. As they run to get to the entrance, they hear the pounding and digging as rock and dirt is flung about in the cave. Outside, we see Batra against the Air Force as Mothra soon catches up for round two. They begin a big air battle as Batra gains the upper hand. Batra then gives chase to Mothra, who's trying to lose Batra in the city. Ling, Chen, and Gunpei, as well as the other survivors, blow up the entrance to the surface behind them. They radio to send more defenses to their position. They scramble to find the Mothra entrance, but are too late as the ground explodes upward as Kumanga breaches the surface with her brood. They begin to fire as Chen and Ling are led away. The Chinese commander calls to Gunpei to lead the innocent out while they hold the spiders. Gunpei tells them to hold until they get more reinforcements. They begin to return to the monarch base, and they soon realize the Chinese forces are completely overwhelmed. Chen and Ling begin to tear up as Gunpei tells them not to let their deaths be in vain. Kumanga destroys all the tanks in the area as Kumanga goes in search of radiation. As spiders start to swarm all around and are almost caught, the group makes it to the perimeter of the monarch base, where Mechagodzilla begins to barrage Kumanga and her brood. Here the spiders swarm Mechagodzilla as Kumanga takes advantage of the distraction to charge Mechagodzilla. The group heads inside and we learn that the area in the vicinity was evacuated, but are waiting on any sort of backup. Mechagodzilla begins to burn all the spiders as Kumanga breaks Mechagodzilla in half. Brooks contacts them as they tell them to seek cover, as the Air Force moves in to bombard the area. Mechagodzilla's pilots launch in an escape pod, which shoots them into the air, and as they parachute down, they see all the bombs hit Kumanga and the brood decimating them and the forest around them. As the pilots hit the ground, we see the sm smoke start to clear as Kumanga is still alive and enraged. Ling tries to call Mothra and whispers that Kumanga is free. Mothra leads Batra away and towards Kumanga as Mothra finds Kumanga in a very mountainous area. She barely evades Kumanga as Batra is captured instead by Kumanga. Batra and Kumanga wrestle down the mountain pass. Here, Batra is wounded and stung by Kumanga, but is then dismembered by supersonic Mothra. Kumanga losing two limbs adjusts to compensate for bal balance. Batra bites into Kumanga as Mothra then sweeps again, taking another limb from Kumanga. Here, Batra blasts Kumanga, killing her. Batra, wounded, continues to engage Mothra as Mothra leads Batra back into the tunnel to prevent any further harm. Inside we see the two firing projectiles at each other as Batra's Mothra's wings are both burned. They charge into each other, lighting up the cavern with their luminescent light, and as they hit the ground, the ground shakes loose another cavern. The two wounded are fallen onto by rocks, and they both try to get up but are too wounded. Batra begins to suffer from the wounds by Kumanga. Here, Batra begins to fade into an ethereal mist, as Mothra moves in to absorb it. She begins to web the surrounding area and cocoons herself with the remains of Batra. Chen, after the events, is seen walking with Ling as they begin to hear a heartbeat within the cocoon. Gunpei and his remaining men build a shrine for all those lost in the battle. Ling goes to talk with Gunpei, who she discovers is in tears over the men lost. He confides in her, saying any hate towards another for not being the same is a waste and a shame. She embraces him and tells him that Mothra is life and she knows not Japanese nor Chinese. They are all one under the sun. He looks at the cocoon and asks what will come out. She responds, Mothra, as she once was. Gunpei then bows to Mothra and Ling joins him. Here the crew inside begin to hear ethereal-like music echo in the chamber. Ling begins to hear a whispering hum. Ling then begins to lead Chen on as Gunpei follows. Chen asks where Ling is going, and she responds by saying that she understands her song, The Way is Clear, as they head through the chambers back to Kumanga's lair. And at the back there are man-made doors that lead into a lush underground forest lit by blue light. Almost like a dream, they continue to walk. They almost fall off a waterfall as Ling catches Gunpei, pulling him into her. In a moment she reads into him and can hear Mothra speak of him. As they compose themselves, she tells him that Mothra likes him. Gunpei starts to ask about all the talk with Mothra. Chen replies with another story passed down from their family. Titans would offer gifts to the people as in their stories. They were raised by Titans, as one day Titans would no longer be around. Each group of Titans had their own people who worshipped them and eventually would forget the lessons taught. Though her family was the last of the remembered, who passed down maternally to them. It is a curse and a gift. They will always have twins in their lineage because of Mothra's curse 50,000 years ago. Ling points ahead of them as they hear rustling in the foliage ahead. Up ahead they see Kamakuras, 
a giant prey mantis, a guardian of the forest they are in. As they go deeper in, the titan pays no attention to them as it continues to clean itself. They see giant half-buried statues of people and titans. They come up to a clearing where they see smaller mothra types all about the size of cars. Though Kumanga was bigger, Kamakuros was faster. Here, a giant wasp moves in to attack them, and Kamakura shows his speed, capturing the wasp within seconds. They see the other Mothra Kaiju begin to glow red with rage. They begin to lift as they see more wasps flying to meet them. The battle felt otherworldly to them. Gunpei told them to move away, and Ling hears one of the Mothra creatures tell her to seek refuge in one of the temples nearby. As the battle ends, they see all the fallen kaiju begin to fuse into cocoons. The survivors grab the cocoons of their own and drag them back to safety. As the battle is ended, they begin to search the structures nearby. Chen and Ling come to the conclusion that a giant cataclysmic event occurred over 200,000 years ago and sealed entrances to the inner empires of man. From the transcribings, they see the last old ones was spreading chaos and inducing madness among the people. Gaia, along with Kronos, defeat the Ancient One to a place called Rilai. Where in remnants of the Old One's capital, the Sleeping God is frozen in a sort of stasis deep underneath into what they describe as a mini-sun into the Earth. One of the Mothra returns to meet with Ling. Here Ling learns what has transpired is a repetitive occurrence. As they wait for the Queen's return, she tells him that Mothra has re-emerged with Batra but is told that is only one part of the puzzle. Her face turns grim as Chen and Gunpei asks what they are saying. She turns and says that the union was not just split into two Mothras, but into humans as well. The old queen of the people was born twins as part of the essence was presented unto them. In short, one of the sisters would have to rejoin with Mothra for Gaia to regain her wholeness. Gunpei resists and Chen offers herself. Ling looks at both of them and says that she knows she is the chosen one. As she tells her sister that she was always different, she tried to reassure her and remind her that she will always treasure their memories and that no matter where or who she is, she will always be able to talk to her, even in whispers. It is here Mothra now as Gaia flies in and the awe fills Ling, Chen, and Gunpei as she lands before them. Chen bids her sister farewell and places her hand in Gunpei's. She tells them to bring peace to the people and begins to fade into an ethereal mist as Gaia now glows gold. Chen and Gunpei hear her whisper to them that they have more work ahead of them. Now some recap as I'm sometimes terrible at making some things clear. In this, I want it known that Mothra, once Gaia, splits every 50,000 years and in the recent 50,000 years was corrupted to split into two complete opposites, which forced the split into the queen of humans of that era and region. Here's where I end the movie Mothra and set up for Kong 2 Hollow Earth. Though I have two prequels to Kong 2 to write, Ultraman and Gamera. The events of Ultraman I'm having take place during the King of Monsters and Gamera happens at the same time as King Kong vs. Godzilla. Please let me know what you thought of this rendition of Mothra. Did you like the spider sequence? Would you have wanted more adventure and less suspense? What would you have changed? Anywho, this is Lord Commander Guts aka Mike G, out.